But what I want to share with you is something what God had put on my heart a while back and I just didn't feel at that time it was right. But it kind of all came into sense during the giveaway. As many of you guys know, I didn't work the giveaway this year. I decided to be grandma. <laughs> what a hard decision to make. So I watched Grace while you guys worked so hard, but I knew I had to keep Mike Echterling in line. So every day, I would remind him of his list. Every day, I would write out what he was to get done and <laughs> stick it in his pocket. And as Tori would tell you, he forgot one thing. And so when he came home and he said, I forgot, really before he said that, he said, you didn't tell me. <laughs> so I did the normal thing. I began to scold him like I've never scolded before. And I was telling him how bad he was, how wrong he was. Mike Echterling, I told you, I wrote it down. And you know what God did? He spoke to me in the midst of my scolding. He spoke to my heart and he said, excuse me, Denise. How many times have I told you to do something? How many times have I written it out for you in the Word of God and you have forgotten it? Now, I don't know about you. Maybe you've never done that, but I have on several occasions because we've been given promises from God and these promises go into our hearts. And all of a sudden we get excited because He's spoken a word to us. Maybe the words you've received is that what you have dreamt about your whole life, you will succeed. You will see with your hands. It could be that the problem you're facing is going to turn around. He promised that. It could be that the addiction that you have been dealing with is not going to beat you. You're going to beat the addiction. It could be that you want to meet the right person. And right now you're looking around going, dear God, I live in Hamilton, Montana. <laughs> but, oh, amen, I heard that one. Okay. But so often we forget that our healing has already been given to us 2,000 years ago. We forget that even though the, the situation can be there, the symptoms are there, the healing has to become manifested. But all of a sudden, we got the word when Jesus told us. And we get excited and we start praying. We start standing. We start believing. We become passionate about the word of God. But guess what? It doesn't, it doesn't happen as quick as what we think is going to happen. All of a sudden, it's a week. All of a sudden, it's a month. All of a sudden, it's a year. And I don't know about you, but you become disappointed. And when the medical report comes back that you've been standing is going to change, all of a sudden, it's worse. Well, I'm telling you, those negative thoughts that we have become louder and louder, and we start believing that nothing's ever going to work out. We start believing that it's never going to happen and we're never going to get well. God's forgotten about us. And too often we let these things that come in our mind, that come into our heart, drown out the promises of God. So what I'm trying to tell you this morning, and I'm going to say it over and over again, is we have to remember what God has said. Whether it be that He has spoken it in our heart or He's written it in His Word. We have to stay in faith. It would be a whole lot easier if He had done this differently. 
If he had conferred with me, I'd have told him as soon as I say it, boom, it's done. But he wants us to have faith that what he said he will do. How do we do that? We have to go back to the promises. How do we do that? We have to thank him before we even receive it. How do we do that? We start declaring favor, declaring victory, declaring the healing that we know has already been promised. The other thing we have to do is we have to stir it up. <laughs> Let me come over here to Jim. We got to stir it up. And all of you know what I'm doing. I'm stirring up the contents so that it'll come out. It'll spew. And that's what you and I have to do on our insides. And we do that by remembering the promises of God. We have to remember that God is always faithful. Say that with me this morning. You know, and he's not going to tell us to do something and not do it. He doesn't lie. He doesn't know how to. He even swore on himself that he would do what he said he would do. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. I know personally, I have preached on this scripture probably 50 times. But it says all. Say all. all. Say it again. All. All. all of his promises are? Yes and amen. They're what? Yes and amen. Now that tells me those things are that he's promised are going to come to pass. But this is the part I struggle with. Not on my timetable. It means we have to trust him and promise that he's making a way where there seems to be no way. Now it's easy to believe in God when things are just wonderful, fantastic. I had an ingrown toenail and it goes away. You know, it's wonderful. But sometimes when things are taking longer, all of a sudden we become frustrated. We become worried. We become afraid. Because the enemy is using those circumstances to help us forget what God has already said. Because Satan, the devil, the jerk, whatever you want to call him, he wants us to be so caught up in what is happening so that we focused on the bad and not the answer. But we have to remember what God has already said. Some of you guys know several years back I got sick. I couldn't eat. I was in terrible pain any time I even attempted to do anything with food. And I had to go to the doctor. That was my last resort. Unfortunately, it should have been the Word of God, but I changed things up a little bit. And I went to the doctors, and they all told me the same thing. We have no idea what's wrong, but we know that if you don't eat, you're going to die. And they sent me home telling me that I had to eat, but I couldn't eat because of the pain. And in three short months, I lost well over 75 pounds. Yeah, I looked terrific, but man, I was not feeling good. And I can remember planning in my mind how I was going to relinquish what needed to be done here at the church. So I took videos of things that I did so that Mike and Jesse and Michelle would know how to work these things that I had done. I was planning for defeat. And I can remember one day I was sitting up in the bed because I couldn't do anything else. When you don't eat, you have no strength. And I'm sitting up in the bed and Michelle walks in the door and she was so mad. And I thought she was mad at the devil. I thought, yay, she's going to stand with me. No, she grabbed the remote to the TV. I was watching the Harmar channel. I wanted to have a relief in romance. <laughs> and she grabs it, turns off the TV, grabs my phone, and storms out the room. And I thought, what am I going to do now? I can't even get out of bed. I have no strength. What am I supposed to do? She comes back about an hour later, and with it, she hands me my phone. And she said, this is all you're going to listen to. It's worship songs and it's about healing. So mom, 
you're healed, and don't you dare turn on that TV. And I thought, oh, I love you too. And she walked out. But the scripture that God gave me was Psalms 37, 19. And I want to tell you that it's a scripture that I've looked at a lot this week. Each one of us, whether we believe in whatever is going on, it's not been an easy week. But Psalms 37, 19 said, you will not be discouraged in hard times. Did you hear that? You're not going to be discouraged in hard times. And even as Pastor Jesse said, it goes on, even in famine, you will have more than enough. No matter what happens, God's going to take care of us, his children. Because the economy is not God's source. God is our source. God is our source for our finances. God is our source for Crystal to get out of that chair. God is the source for us to be able to have more than enough. And God is our source of peace and of life. You know, we've just got to be determined to stay connected to the source. Because he never runs dry. He doesn't turn his back on us. And I love it because of the thing that he's been reminding me over and over again, that he said, I will make things happen that you don't even see. He will make things happen in ways that we cannot even understand. The word said that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. What are we doing? We're making us remember what the word has said. Then Jesus says in John eleven forty, Did I not tell you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? The key in that sentence is, if you believe. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Whether you're facing a sickness You know, like I said, during that time, I gave up that things were going to change. But you know what? God didn't give up. I know we look at Crystal every week and we go, God, what's going on? God's saying, I haven't changed. She's already healed. And I'm telling you, you're healed. Your body's restored. I'm telling you that you don't need to be worried. You don't need to be stressed out. Because God will remind you, didn't I already tell you by my stripes you're healed? Didn't I already tell you that I will always give you more than enough? Didn't I tell you that I will turn your mourning into dancing? We have to be reminded. And we have to thank God for what he's already told us. It's not easy to be happy when we're looking at this crazy media. But you know what? We do not need to be discouraged because we're feeding ourselves with that. We have to be fed by the promises of God. We have to replay it over and over again, just like I love to do with Hallmark movies. That's not going to make me well. That's not going to give me what I need. I have to dwell on the promises of God and fear will leave. Faith will arise. Because I'm stirring it up. I'm stirring it up. I'm saying, God, allow what's inside of me to explode all over my neighborhood, Miss Cheryl. All over this world. All over the state of Montana. That we will see the glory of God. We used to tell Michelle when she was young that there was a battle that was taking place in her mind. Joyce Myers kind of wrote a book about it, and it was really quite good. But the enemy's going to come against your thoughts. He's going to tell you it's not going to work. You need to walk in fear. You need to walk in doubt. Nothing's going to change. And we used to tell Michelle the reason the devil tells us that is to keep our minds so full of the negative that we become preoccupied for what is not going to work. We have to take control of our thought life so that when worry comes, and I'm going to be honest with you, I worried this week. I was saying, God, what's going on? God, what am I supposed to do? You know what he told me? 
remember what I said. And I thought, thank you, God. I want to do more. I want to see more. He said, Denise, don't let your mind play autoplay over and over again thinking that your days are done. We have to remember what God has said. We have to thank Him that even though we don't understand it, even though we don't see it, we know that God's making a way where there seems to be no way. That He's always causing us to triumph. And that Jesus said, we'll go from glory to glory. We'll go from victory to victory. But the one that I've held on the most this week is that He holds me in the palm of His hands. That's where we are, guys. There's no reason to be worried. There's no reason to have stress. And if we have an addiction, if we have something that seems to have had a stronghold on our lives, know that every day is a new beginning. God even told us that there's new beginnings every day. Every day is new. Every day is that opportunity to see the glory come. But we can't let the negative thoughts keep us back. We have to remember what God said. You know, it's kind of funny this morning. I left the, the house and I went and got donuts. You know, I did it last week and now I'm doing even bigger because I know we all love real donuts, not the stuff in plastic. So I went by there and as I'm getting ready to go to the grocery store, I realized I forgot my phone. So I turned around, went back to the house, went and grabbed my phone. And now I'm just driving. And I'm thinking, God, thank you for what you're going to speak today. I'm just praying. And I get here and I said, Mike, I forgot my Coke. And he said, do you want me to run the house? I said, oh, there's no reason. Just go to one of the little grocery stores. I forgot my phone, forgot the Coke. And all of a sudden he comes back. He said, honey, i got to go back to the house. And I said, what did you forget? You know what he told me, Miss Cheryl? You had called and said our garage door was open. I forgot to shut it. <laughs> and as I'm preparing for service, I realize how easy it is when your mind is thinking about something else to forget what God has said. Guys, we have to remind ourselves to stay in the Word, to believe that we're victorious, to know that He's on our side. Yes. This week I was studying in the, the Bible, the book of Job, and we all think we've had it rough. Job had it tough. He lost a lot. He lost family. He lost business. The one thing he should have lost was his wife, but she stayed. She said, go kill yourself. Get it all over with. Isn't that an encouraging woman? Don't think I'm bad now. <laughs> but in Job chapter 8, verse 21, God reminds Job of something. He said, I will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Well, I don't know about you, I don't laugh when things are not going well. So this scripture was reminding Job, reminding us that joy and victory were coming. Now that was in chapter 8. But the victory didn't come for Job until chapter 19. I don't know about you, but when I pray, I want to see it right then. I don't want to wait eight more chapters, nine more chapters, ten more chapters, eleven more chapters. I want the answer now. And when I thought about everything that Job had lost and what we're looking at right now in our world, I sometimes wonder how many people are sitting in ashes right now. How many people are discouraged? Are they thinking about what's going wrong in their life and in the life around them? And I know for myself what I do is I start feeling sorry for myself. And maybe some people even thought about giving up on life. But Job remembered. Job remembered what God said in Job 8.21, I will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shout of joy. Because in Job chapter 19, verse 25, I love the way he said it. He said, but as for me, but as for you, but as for this city, for this nation, we know that our Redeemer lives. 
Guys, we've got to declare that. And this morning, I want you to say it with me. I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. What was Job saying? He was saying, God, you're still on the throne no matter what's happening down here. God, I thank you that you're bigger than any situation, any circumstance. And God, I know that my latter days are better than my former days. Because Job probably was told, you know what, it's downhill from here. But guys, it's not. God's on the throne. And you and I need to remember, remind ourselves what God has said. That we don't need to be ruled by the circumstances or the emotions. I've cried this week. Many people have. Many people have shouted and done a dance. I've cried. But I could not let the negative thoughts rule me. I had to keep reminding myself what the Word of God said. And guys, when we do that, guess what? Just like Job saw breakthrough, we'll see the breakthrough. We'll see Jesus show up and show off. Now, I know all of us have gone through disappointments. I know all of us have lost someone that we love and we think the story has ended. But I'm telling you, the story's not over yet. It may be painful, but I want you to know that God is going to get us through. Not only is he going to get us through, he's going to fill our mouth with laughter. He's going to give us joy that's going to be the strength. But you and I don't need to fall into the trap of complaining. Because when we do, we're just reminding ourselves of what's not right and not who's right. As many of you guys know, I... um, I preached a sermon about a week ago. It was freezing cold. Why do you guys die in the winter? Man, oh man, it was cold. I was outside. It was bitterly cold. I'm sitting there and I'm shivering. And of course, I forgot to wear socks and gloves, but we won't go there. Even Gracie told me this morning, Grandma, no socks. And I went, shh, don't tell anybody. You know, so I'm sitting outside. It was probably 18 degrees as we're burying this person outside. And And I was like, God, give me a scripture. And I looked to Isaiah 61.3. It's one we all know. He said, he will give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But then I looked down to verse 7. Hadn't really seen that one in a while. It said of your shame, it says, you will receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance and you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. I got excited about that because what God is saying to each one of us is he's going to double our joy. He's going to double our peace. God is saying we're coming out so that we can come into what is better, what is stronger, what is happier and Miss Crystal what's healthier. We just need to do what Job did and thank him. I know my Redeemer lives. Say it with me again. I I know my Redeemer lives. What you're saying is, Father, you have good plans for me. You're working all things out for our good. And, Father, you're filling my mouth with laughter. Because, guys, when we're under pressure, when we feel that things are not going the way we think they should go, We have to go back to what God said. We have to go back to what God has promised. And when we remember what God said, we're not going to be worried. We're going to have peace in the midst of the storm because Jesus is in our boat and we're going to the other side. We believe in a God who doesn't shake because things look impossible. He likes that. We also know that we have been given the courage to defeat the giants. There's some giants in this land. But guys, we will never give up because we have God on our side. Again, I was reminded of the first Easter morning. Jesus had been on the cross. He was crucified. He rose again, but three women decided that they were going to go and prepare Jesus' body for burial. They had not heard about the resurrection yet. 
And so they go there and they see that the stone had been rolled away. And they go into the tomb and they're looking and they see that Jesus' body is not there. And as you can imagine, they were broken. They were hurt. They were scared. They were weeping. And two angels show up. And in Luke chapter 24, verses 5 through 6, the angels told them, Why are you looking in a tomb for someone who is alive? Jesus is not here. He is risen from the dead. I Again, I thought of that because this week I've looked at some stuff and I said, okay, things are dead. We're done. We're finished. And God, I heard God say, only believe. Stand strong. But I want you to look at the rest of chapter 24, verses 5 through 6. The angels go on and said, don't you remember? Don't you remember what Jesus told you in Galilee? That he would be betrayed, crucified, then on the third day he would raise from the dead. Now in verse 7 of chapter 24, the women remembered, they said. They remembered and they rushed back to tell the disciples. Now these women couldn't wait because once they remembered, they had shaken themselves awake to be able to spew what was on the inside. Now these women didn't see anything different. The, the tomb was still empty. They only had to go on what they heard that the Word said. But when we hear what God said, when we remember what God says, it will change our perspective. We won't dwell on the negative. We'll know that God is on our side, and because God is on our side, no one can be against us. Now, what am I trying to tell you today? We need to be reminded what Jesus has said. We well, say, well, Jesus told them, what, years before that? No, three days before he went to the cross. He told them he was going to be crucified, he would die, bury, and raise. Three days, and they forgot. But I'm telling you, we can't forget what the Word of God says for us. We have to stir it up. And even though we may be perplexed, I'll get that word out, like those ladies, maybe they were overwhelmed with emotions. I know their world was turned upside down. Just like our world has been turned upside down this week, I'm telling you they forgot what Jesus said, and that'll cause grief. We need to be reminded. We need to know that we have to remember what Jesus said. And when we do that, the circumstances, the trouble, the stress that the media is trying to put on us, we're not going to worry about it because we know what Jesus said. I've never left you. I'll never forsake you. You'll always have more than enough. Your storehouses will be full. By my stripes, you are already healed. You give and it's given back to you, shaken, put together and running over. So I'm telling you, we have to remember what God said. We can't go by what we see. We can't go by what we're experiencing. We have to start by believing what Jesus has said and allowing that to well up inside of us because Jesus will always override what we see. Now, I need to just encourage you this week, the next several weeks, Let's focus on the promises. Let's not focus on the problem. God's going to take care of his kids. Amen. You know, last night we were sitting around the house and I had to remind myself I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. And I'm quoting it to Grace. And my sweet little Grace looked at me and went, bread, Grandma, bread. And I just began to weep. Because whatever Grandma says, she knows Grandma's going to do. And you know what? Jesus has said that to you before I said it to you. Jesus will take care of his kids. And we need to dare to believe that the promises are for us. So often, we look at Dan and we go, Hey, Dan's going to get it, but I don't know about me. I kind of had a weird week. Or Jim's going to get it. He's a man of God. But, you know, Rhonda, maybe not so much. 
But you know what? That's not what the Word of God says. That's God right. said it's for all of His children. That's right. These promises are ours. They're all yes and amen. And there's not a problem that we have gotten ourselves into as a person or as a nation that Jesus can't rescue us from. But we've got to do our part. We've got to start declaring and thanking Him. We've got to stir and shake the faith. Because, guys, we're going to be popping some things soon. And we're going to see the glory of God descend upon this church, descend upon this city, descend upon this nation. But you and I have to begin to declare and thank Him for the victory. We have to thank Him for the strength to endure. We need to thank Him that by His stripes we are already healed. We need to thank Him that all the seed that we've put in the ground, what we've sown, will come back, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We need to declare that this is God's land. Yes. And whatever we put our hand to, we will see success. Thank you for watching today's message, and we pray that it impacted you greatly. We'd love to stay in contact with you, and so you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And also check out our website for upcoming events at h2hm.org. We also have four ways to give, and those four ways are listed below. Also, be blessed in everything that you do, and we appreciate you partnering with The Place Church, and we're believing God's best for you.